But what many people don't continue on with is the ascension. The ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and what has taken place after the resurrection. I have given you an outline of a number of verses. And what I want to share with you tonight is to walk through these verses for you to get an understanding of what Jesus' ministry is right now and what he's preparing for. How many of you know that Jesus isn't done yet? He's still preparing. He's preparing a work and he's preparing a ministry. He has yet to fulfill the rest of his ministry. Isn't this awesome? Folks, there's more to come. So that's awesome. So let me share with you where he is and what he's doing right now. Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 says this, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. His voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. This is John the Revelator, who is on the Isle of Patmos, He is exiled and under punishment for being a believer, a disciple of the Lord. And on the Lord's day, he has a vision to see the Lord. He hears the voice of the Lord like a trumpet in Revelation 1. When he turns to see uh, the Lord, Jesus, he sees this. It says he falls on his face as if he was dead. He just can't imagine, can't express and see. He had enough of a glimpse to see this, this visage of Jesus, and it was so much of a terror to him, he fell on the ground. Now, this is the same guy who at the Last Supper had his head on his chest, cuddling with Jesus. And and here, he sees Jesus high and lifted up. Now, John also saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, high and lifted up and in his full glory. But it was still within earth's atmosphere and still under the restraint of Jesus' humanity. But here, you have a resurrected Christ. You have him standing in heaven and you have him before the throne of God. And John is just overwhelmed at this image of who Christ is. The question is, though, how do you see him dressed? He is dressed a certain way, and John is describing the way he's dressed. And does anybody want to consider how Jesus is dressed? All white, with a sash, with a robe, with a, right? He's in the priestly garb. Standing among the lampstands, the priests are always attending to the lamps in the holy of holies, the holy place, I should say. And as he's standing before the lampstand in the throne of God, the lampstand representing the seven churches that he is tending to and ministering to, what don't you see on his head? A crown. We don't see a crown here. We see the ministry of a high priest. That's what we see. We see that Jesus rose and ascended into heaven. He says that the eternal spirit sprinkled his blood on the altar. And then look at these verses, Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ who died, furthermore also raised, who is even, where? At the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Where did Jesus ascend to? the right hand of God. In the beginning of the book of Revelation, every time you see the throne, you see God the Father on the throne and you see Jesus at the right hand of the Father, ministering the right hand of God's session. Psalm 110 verse 1, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Psalm 110, a little further down, verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. This Psalm 110 is one of the favorite psalms of the New Testament writers. They continue to refer to it, especially the writer of Hebrews, who's referencing the temple and the ministry of the priesthood. Now, he doesn't say that Jesus is following after the priesthood of the Levites. There's an entire discussion in Hebrews chapter 7 about the Levitical priesthood that is done. It's over. It's obsolete. It was passed away. 
because they, they lived, they died, and they were limited in what they did. He says that, in fact, Jesus is after the order of a different priesthood, the order of Melchizedek. In Hebrew, it's better said Melchizedek. So he is of the order of Melchizedek. And who is this Melchizedek? In the book of Genesis, uh, the writer of Hebrews tells us about this, this priest of Salem. Right? He's the, he's the king of Salem. The prince of Salem. What, what is Salem? Does anybody know the word in Hebrew? Yeah, Jerusalem. Salem is Shalom. He's the prince of peace. So he's the king over Shalom. The, uh, Jerusalem. And he is the king of righteousness. That's what Melchi Zedek means. Zedek means righteous. And so he is the king of righteousness, the prince of peace. Sound like anybody you know? That's in Genesis. Abraham meets him. And he is the high priest of the most high God. And Abraham bows before him. The lesser bows before the greater. The greater bestows blessing to the lesser. Who's greater than Abraham? Talk to a Jew, they'd say no one. But there is one greater, Melchizedek. He had no beginning, no end. We don't know where his lineage is. We don't know where it ends. It's a reference to Jesus. And so David writes about the kingdom of Melchizedek, the priesthood of Melchizedek, because it is an eternal one. And guess how many priests are in this order? One. There is only one high priest who lives for eternity. And he is ministering not in a temple made by hands, but in the very heavenlies. And he is at the right hand of God. That's who Jesus is. That's what happened when Jesus went into the baptismal waters with John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a Levite. John the Baptist, some say and believe he was the right high priest that should have been at that time instead of the group of high priests that were put in by the the Romans, the puppets who were in high priest. And so here's John the Baptist who is a Levitical high priest and Jesus walks into the baptismal waters and something exchanges there. Something happens because the Levitical priests baptize now the king of all kings, the new priesthood, and that's Melchizedek. And the order shifts from the Levitical priesthood to the priest of Jesus Christ who is Melchizedek priest. And he now offers his sacrifice to the living God. And so Jesus is ministering in in heaven as the high priest. Colossians 3.1 If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated where? The right hand of God. What does the right hand mean? The right hand is the saving arm of God. The right hand is the provision of God. The right hand is the judgment of God. Who is meeting out now between heaven and earth the will of God? Jesus. He is the mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. And so he is ministering. And he is in session. So answer question number two. Where is Christ seated right now? And he is seated at the right hand of God. Sit at my right hand. Be seated at my right hand. And that's where we get the word session. Christ is in his session. Sessio in the Latin. And it means to be seated. The act of sitting. Why is he sitting? Because there's no more sacrifice that is to be made for sin. There's no more sacrifice to be offered to God anymore. He's sitting down. A high priest would never dare sit in the high holy of holies, would he? No, he wants to get out of there because he could be dead. But Jesus sat down, meaning one thing. His blood was sufficient to save mankind and to abolish sin. He is now mediating no longer over the issue of man's sin to God, he is now mediating as a high priest of God's favor to man. That's what he's doing right now. He is interceding and ministering. Let's go on. I'm I'm glad you're excited. Anybody excited about this? Come on. Give me some amens tonight. Ephesians 1.20 God, he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hands. Everybody say seated. Where's Jesus? Yes, he's seated at his right hand 
in the heavenly places, far above all rulers, all authority, all power, all dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The ministry of Jesus right now is completely to minister to his body. He makes, he ever lives to make intercession. He is interceding for his body, his people. The number one ministry Jesus has right now is to you. He is mediating everything Father wants to accomplish on this planet to you. How is God going to get anything done on planet earth? Through us. We're always praying, God, do this. God, do that. God, you do this. God, change that. God, move this. And Jesus is trying to get his church to do exactly what they're praying for. Because you're the vehicle that's supposed to do it. And that's the entire ministry of Jesus. He's getting his people to understand who they are. He is interceding day and night. Somebody pray my will into the earth. Somebody pray for this car accident that just happened. Somebody speak the prophetic word in that life. Somebody witness to that person because they're called to be chosen. They're called to be saved. Somebody witness to this. Somebody throw the seed of my gospel out. Somebody bind Satan over here. Come on, people, get over here. I need my people to move over in that corner of the woods. He's constantly ministering. That's what he's doing. Jesus is ministering. But we want to watch him. We want to sit in the chair and have him do it. And he's saying, you're my body. I will not work independent of my body. You know, he won't operate without his hand moving. You're his hand, you're his feet. And so God is calling his church right now for 2,000 years since Jesus ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. He is at work as he's sitting, calling out the commands and mediating to his people. I was always amazed at this one verse where in the book of Acts that they are furious with Stephen because Stephen is ministering Jesus, right? And they come and... Of course, it's Rabbi Saul, isn't it? Rabbi Saul, uh, who is offended at Stephen and gathers the people together to execute him. And they begin to stone Stephen. And Stephen says this. There's this beautiful glow upon him as he beholds heaven. He has a an open vision of heaven and what he sees now this this is so beautiful to me what he sees is God and he sees Jesus what ah he's standing he's not sitting he's standing see and and so Stephen sees Jesus standing That means that he's sitting as the high priest as far as his sacrifice, but when his child is hurting, when his faithful servant is in need, he gets up out of his seat and reaches towards his man. Come on. Come on. That's intercession. And This boy got pummeled, man. He got rocks in the head. He got everything. Killed him. But what he saw was Jesus coming for him and bringing him forward. This is what Jesus is doing. Ministering as our high priest. Hebrews 7.23 The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in the office. The Levitical priesthood had to have a next priest and the son of a priest, of a son of a priest, because, you know, they grow to be 70, 80 years old, they die. Need another priest. You always need another priest with the Levites. But he, Jesus, holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he's able to save That word save, sozo, means deliver, heal, whatever that you need from God, whatever God will accomplish. It's not just saving salvation. It is deliverance. It's healing. It's restoration. It's consequently, he's able to 
completely do what he needs to do to the uttermost. Those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. There is a high priest that never sleeps, never wanders, never misses anything, is poised and positioned to intercede every promise of God. Do you remember what Paul said in chapter 2, uh, 2 Corinthians 2.9? Uh, no matter how many promises God has made, they are what? Yes. yes. To the amen. Now let's get this verse right. No matter how many promises God has made. So let me ask you this. How many promises has God made? Well, we've got a catalog of them right here. We've got a catalog of them. 66 books of promises. Right? And, and so we've got so many promises. No matter how many he has made, they have all become activated by the death of Jesus. A will and a testament is not activated till the one who writes it dies who wrote this promises of God the word of God that became flesh when he died on the tree every one of his promises were now activated the living will and testament was now activated and the Holy Spirit who is the executor of the will is now doling them out Jesus is giving out every promise they are yes they are yes they are yes to get the job done on planet earth so salvation is open to all mankind, every human being. And every promise of God is yes, yes, yes to those who will trust the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is saying yes. But that verse says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ Jesus to the amen of the church. There needs to be an amen or a so be it being called from planet earth to the throne room. These promises aren't just floating in, in the sky somewhere. You have to execute them. You have to call them out. That's why the people of God are praying. That's why the people of God are issuing them. And so Jesus says, whatever you've bound on earth, I've already bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, I've already loosed. But give me an amen. Give me a command. Give me a so be it. So that I can give it forth to you because I'm mediating the will of the Father to you. Every reference we see in Revelation is the Father's on the throne. The Father's on the throne. He's still on the throne mediating. Jesus is at the right hand mediating and executing all that needs to take place to bring souls in and to establish his authority on heaven and to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus is actively doing this. He's actively got disciples. He's continuing to train. We got a group of them here tonight. He's training you. He's working with you right now. That's why we've got to learn the voice of the Lord. That's why we've got to hear him. That's why when you get an unction to pray for somebody, Jesus in the throne room is, is, is stirring you to pray. He's asking for you to give an, om an amen, a so be it, so he can release things. But that's why you're on the earth. You're his body. And that's the ministry of Jesus. So what is Jesus' ministry right now? High priest. He's high priest. That's what he's issuing. We need a priest. How many of you know that? We need a high priest. We need a mediator. We're not going to need a priest when he returns and we have a resurrected body, are we? Not because it will be all in all. We don't. But right now, until his return, he is operating in session. He's in session. He's seated and he is mediating the will of God. And the church has got to get actively involved in his work of intercession. We always think of it as our work. We're not partnering with Jesus. We're thinking he's having a Coke sitting on the chair waiting. Oh, a prayer? Is there a prayer somewhere? What? Who do you think is mediating the will into the earth, causing his body to will and to act and to do according to his perfect. It is he who wills and, and acts within us to get us to say amen, to so be it. So when you lay hands on somebody, you say, Father, in Jesus' name, bring forth healing. And Jesus is mediating from heaven. Father, by my virtue of my blood, send forth the ministry of the Spirit into that body because my hands are touching them right now. That's how one you are with the Lord Jesus. In fact, let me say this. 
Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Know you not that you were uh, bought with a price, you're no longer your own? Right? Therefore glorify God in your body. He says you are the body of Christ. So much so that if you were to take, sorry for the crassness, but this is Paul, not me. He said if you were to sleep with a prostitute, you're joining Jesus to a prostitute. That's how connected my body is to Jesus Christ. Is anybody getting this? So when I touch someone, the ministry of Jesus Christ is touching someone. The mediation of Jesus is ministering right now in planet Earth. He is mediating, and he'll get up from his chair when he needs to, and he will move and he will act. That's what he's doing right now. Now turn the page over, and let's consider Jesus as king. This is where we're going to start seeing when Jesus is going to come into his coronation as king. Check this out. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Then the seventh trumpet blew his trumpet. There were six before this. I'm just helping you. Okay? There were six before this. Those trumpets were what? Judgments. Guess who executes judgment at the right hand of God? Jesus. You know, sometimes we all think Jesus is the nice guy and God's the the hard-nosed guy. You know, that God's kind of crotchety and Jesus is the lovey-dovey one. Who do you think executes all justice right now in the earth? Jesus. And so those seven trumpets, those vials, those bowls, guess who's executing them out? Jesus, the hand of God, the, the right hand of God. And so the seventh trumpet blew his trumpet and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshiped God saying, we give thanks to you Lord God Almighty who is and who was for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. Here's the beginning of the reign of Christ. But you have to understand this. Of course, is he king? Is he reigning now? Yeah, God is ruling and reigning now. But not in the sense of how he will on planet earth. Do you remember in John when they were, Judas asked him, you know, why are, uh, is, is this your kingdom? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay? There's another kingdom that's operating in this world right now. But at this point in the book of Revelation, at the seventh trumpet, it's done. It's over. This is when all judgment from heaven is going to cut loose. And there's one reason why this is when it's all over. Tribulation period's over. The seventh trumpet blasts. Here's why. Jesus, the king, is bringing his kingdom to planet earth. He's going to set his feet on that mountaintop and he is bringing his rule into this planet. And he will rule with a rod of iron. And so what does it say? What are the kingdoms of the world now becoming? I just read it to you. The kingdom of our Lord. All right? No longer... Uh, the kingdoms of men. No more the ideologies of communism, the ideology of democracy, the ideology of so, uh, 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 what's the other one? socialism, the ideology of anything else. It's kingdom. All kingdom. Jesus is coming as king. He's been operating as high priest to bring his will into the earth to save souls, save souls. The tribulation is in fact a work to save Israel and anyone else who will come to the knowledge of Christ. It's the last call on planet earth. That's why the devil is unleashing every demon and every horde of demonic he can to stop people from coming to the knowledge of Christ. But his church is pouring out, his body is working, and so he's, this is the last call. Everybody's going to meet in that Armageddon place, and they're going to come against Israel because they've now come to recognize that they're coming by God to meet their king, King Jesus. It's the last revelation he's coming. Daniel 7 describes it 
13 and 14, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days. There's God sitting on the throne, who is the Son of Man, Jesus, coming in a cloud. Jesus, in fact, referenced this when Pilate asked him about his kingdom. He said, you shall see the Son of Man coming with clouds of glory. And they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, all nations, all languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Revelation 14, 14. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and seated on the cloud, one like the Son of Man with a golden crown on His head and a sharp sickle in His hand. This is the first time you see what on His head? A crown. Yeah. He has now left His ministry as high priest. Uh, he'll be a high priest forever. But he's moving from high priest to king. And he's bringing that authority into the earth. You're going to be there, by the way. You want to see this? What's on Jesus' head now? Golden crown. What's in his hand? Sharp sickle. Revelation 19.11 Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and he makes war. His eyes are like flames of fire, and on his head are what? Many diadems. And he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. The armies of heaven arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty, and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords wow this is the same Jesus that John saw at the beginning but he's dressed a little different he still has the sword coming out of his mouth he still rests in white raiment but now that robe is dipped in what blood but there's something different now as he sees him he's got crowns on He's coming as king. My point tonight is this, that the ministry of Jesus until he is crowned, until he returns as king, right now is as high priest, mediating and declaring his will into the earth so that people may get saved, so that people would get restored, and so that his body would grow to full stature. That means more people got to get saved, that more people got to mature, and his stature is going to be filled out more and more. That means that those who are called to salvation, they're going to continue to to grow. So there's many more that need to come into the kingdom because the stature of Christ needs to fill this earth. And his body is ministering and it's wreaking havoc. We should be making all his enemies his footstool. What's a footstool for? Your feet. We're his hands and his feet. We're to be subduing the work of the enemy. We're to be doing this. And he. this is the perfect program. This thing is working masterfully, beautifully. Because you have God who's sitting on the throne who created all things, executing and willing out his timetable for everything. And you have Jesus now who has fulfilled the sacrifice, the blood atonement, and he's called his body out and he's calling his ministers to do the work and he's mediating them. And so in this dispensation, in this period of time, we We are doing the work for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're doing the work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we doing the work for the Lord Jesus Christ? We're supposed to be doing the work for the Lord Jesus Christ who is interceding, who is calling us and calling it forth because time is getting short. The angels are starting to buff up the crown. The angels are getting ready to prepare the crown. Everybody's in anticipation because King Jesus is ready to come. But he delays. And he delays for one reason, Peter says. 
souls. Peter says that they will scoff at you when you say that Jesus is returning. And he says, don't worry about them scoffing. He delays for one reason. So that souls may be saved. We are the body of Christ. We are doing that work. He is interceding for us to be active. And when he comes as king, we will be riding with him. We will be translated. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We will be raptured with him to meet him in the air and to come with great victory and power following King Jesus who is going to come to this planet 